Brought to you by Almond Auctions, the worldwide leader in antique tractor auctions. Lincoln is home to the Nebraska Tractor Test Laboratory, where more than 2,000 farm tractors have been tested since 1920. Today, the original building has become the Larson Tractor Test and Power Museum, with a variety of classic tractors on display. Now, look here. Just a few miles away is a very unusual tractor that was never tested at Nebraska. It's an Oliver built by Fiat. Here in Nebraska, they don't believe that Fiat Oliver existed because there was never allowed to be sold in Nebraska. They never, even the farmers never, never seen, you know, a 1365 in Nebraska. So that's, you know, they, they kind of eh, with their heads and don't know if that's that real. Did you make that up? What did you do? You know, well, no, that's the way it came from the factory. That's the way the, the dealer got it. They never were tested in Nebraska, so they could not be sold in Nebraska. And so that's why it's kind of unique here in Nebraska to bring one. This tractor is a 1975-1365 Mudder, found and restored to like new condition by John Zakovitz. This is my 1365 Mudder that I found in a, uh, in a junkyard, southern Missouri. And of course it never looked like this. It was all rusted up and Flat tires rotted off, but I thought it was, you know, something else that nobody else has and kind of unique. Although it was built in Italy, the original dealer for this tractor was in California. And in fact, this Fiat built Oliver was designed and outfitted for a special kind of farm work. Because they were specially made for vegetable growers in California. And uh, that particular tractor came from uh, when they grew celery, they irrigated the field over all night. And then in the morning, after the celery was cooled from the water, irrigation water, they uh, picked it. And so, of course, the fields were muddy. And that's the very first four-wheel drive high crops that would go over the top of the uh, celery. It's got a slow transmission in it so that the pickers could keep up with it when it was pulling the, the wagons. and. Um, when I got it, it had a big push block way out here so it could go behind another tractor that was stuck or something with the wagons and go ahead and push push it through the through the fields. That's why it's got nickname as the Mudder, M-U-D-D-E-R, because of the ability that all four, wheel, all four wheels would be pulling. It's not just, uh, uh, you could lock the rear end and you could uh, have all four wheels pulling in, in the mud. This is a, a Fiat, about 46 horse Fiat engine. And uh, the wheels was made like this, so to exactly made for the row spacing of the vegetable crops that was, that was gonna be in. John says the regular 1365 model tractors were popular on dairy farms. With a four cylinder engine, this 1365 worked hard from 1975 to 2005 and then after it landed in that junkyard in Missouri, John took a shine to it. What I like is you can get to the top of the engine. On pretty much all the Fiat tractors, you can open the lid up like that and uh, get to the top and uh, check the injectors and that. It's got four speeds forward and, and one reverse, and then you got a, a high-low in each one and then you also have a creeper gear in each one. So you can go in infinitely slow or you can go pretty fast down the road as fast as you want to. Modified as a mudder somewhere between the Fiat factory and the dealer in California, it seems only about 20 Olivers were put together like this one. But other tractors of the time were made into mudders and John is working on adding those to his collection. They made them from the early early 70s to about 70, 76. Then after, in 76, when Oliver gave way to the white, this is a, the, the Fiat white tractor. They call it a 2-60 because it's got 60 horsepower. And, uh, but they also made mutters out of, out of this tractor also. But they, had, they did the steering a little different. They put the cylinders up front 
so it's uh, sear a little better and they just put a different different grill on it and uh, sunshade and call it a 2-60 and that was gone until un, until uh, the end of white. What is it a different, that I like about mudders? Well, it's it's something else that nobody has. I just like the different appearance. You know, when you see a mudder with the big front wheels like this, it's just altogether different. You know, when you're in a parade, you know, everybody stands out. And, oh, that's different. It's got big front tires like that. And I always thought that was kind of cool. Kind of cool for sure. And as you might guess, John has the fever for Oliver tractors that are just a little bit unusual. His wife Judy thinks that's fine, even though she's watched as their barnyard has been filled by one rare machine after another. This tractor is uh, it was built in uh, 53, 1953, and it is uh, industrial. But when I found it in a junkyard, it was painted green and somebody had put the straight line loader on it. I thought it was pretty real contrast where most industrials are painted orange or painted yellow. But I saw this in here is painted green and fell in love with it because uniquely the uh, idea of this was to be able to back into a pile of sand and the loader goes up and over the top of you and could dump in the truck. And this is another one of my favorites is a is a Ch Oliver Chopper, self-propelled chopper for the guys that had a lot of uh, terraces and a lot of point rows. Uh, actually, they built everything, uh, the tractor part of it, out of a 525 combine. And then they built, got the head from Fox and the chopper. This one's got a, a Hercules gas engine in it, the first ones. Then they went to a, a a 453 Detroit and then later on a Cummings diesel. And this is my 2455 Oliver. I found that at a junkyard sale also. Um, it was built in uh, experimental model in 1969. They made about 10 of them. They gave them to bigger farmers to try them out. And the first articulating tractor Oliver had. And my wife can drive, she, my wife drives it in all the parades. It cost me carpet, living room set, I had to bribe her for her for the first uh, parade that she went in, and <laughs> so she got new carpet, new uh, new living room set for for driving it. It may cost him some new furniture now and then, but John grew up with Oliver tractors, farmed with them, and is now a die-hard collector. And John says he plans to keep on hunting these rare, coveted Oliver classics.